Time for Nature, the tagline for this year's World Environment Day. The theme, biodiversity. More than 500 species have gone extinct in the last 100 years. Another 500 are on the brink. Human-driven climate change is one of the factors pushing what scientists say is a sixth mass extinction. Industrial production and air travel are some of the main causes of the CO2 emissions causing global heating. But the coronavirus crisis has largely brought them to a halt. The biggest drops in global emissions so far came as a result of conflict and three global recessions. But some projections say the current crisis could lead to the biggest ever drop in emissions, more than all these previous reductions combined. Still, some experts say it's not enough. So I think there is a short-term gain, you know, like we're seeing CO2 reductions right now, but um, we need really a massive global effort to solve the climate crisis. And right now we are going to spend the next five years, you know, focused on this pandemic and responding to it, which are five years that we don't really have. As societies move out of lockdown, the question is, how will they do that? For nature, environmentalists will be hoping for a more sustainable step into the future. For more on this, we're joined by Neil King from DW Environment. He's host of the podcast On the Green Fence. Neil, does the drop in CO2 emissions we're seeing during this pandemic give us any reason to hope that we might be getting a grip on climate change? Well, first off, I think it's very important that we make a distinction here uh, between CO2 emissions and uh, CO2 concentrations. That's the level of CO2 in the air. Because even if we have, you know, record drop in emissions this year, the International Energy Agency is predicting 8% for the overall year. That's about 2.6 billion tonnes. That's a huge drop. Um, it doesn't mean that the levels stop growing. In fact, uh, experts say we would have to cut um, human-made uh, CO2 emissions by 50% if we wanted to uh, initiate a trend reversal here. It's a bit like a bathtub, you know, if you have the tap running, uh, the bathtub, the levels will still rise. Uh, the only way to actually turn things around is to switch off the bathtub, uh, switch off the tap. Only that uh, carbon neutral economy and society will get us where we need to be. Hmm. With countries desperate to get their economies going after this coronavirus pandemic, isn't there a danger that fighting climate change will be off the agenda for years to come? Well, there certainly is that risk um, because, yeah, the economic crisis we're facing, uh, the global recession that we're in for, millions of jobs at stake, uh, also the pandemic, these are very imminent threats, uh, far more concrete and tangible to many people than climate change. Uh, but climate change, let's not forget, is by far the greater threat. It's an existential threat for mankind. So we have to get it on the agenda. And I think actually we have a window of opportunity here because we have leverage uh, with the bailouts, you know, all these bailouts that will be drawn up to prop up the system, prop up companies. Uh, we should use this opportunity to actually extract concessions from the companies who tap into this money. It's taxpayers' money. It's your money. It's my money. And we should uh, get binding commitments that puts them on a more sustainable track. So there might be some potential there, um, but the lockdown has already radically changed human behavior patterns. Do you think these changes could have an Im positive implications for the environment? Well, yeah, we've seen a lot of change these past months with the lockdown. Unfortunately, I'm afraid that most of them probably won't be lasting. There are a lot of people out there who want to get back to the old status quo uh, rather sooner than later. But uh, there's one aspect regarding mobility where I think we have a chance to have an impact on the environment, and that is um, home office. Uh, we've had quite a feasibility study undertaken here these past few months, you know, with the lockdown. Uh, we've managed to swing it uh, even under very adverse conditions, even with homeschooling. We've pulled off home office in many sectors. And uh, if you think about it, that transport accounts for about 30% of all CO2 emissions in the EU, and three quarters of that is down to road traffic. So if we could take uh, commuters off the roads by giving them more home office possibilities, that could actually make a huge dent in those CO2 emissions. And it would also enhance uh, work-life balance for employees and happy employees are good employees. Uh, so uh, I think uh, if we made home office the new normal rather than the exception, that would be a great takeaway from this crisis. Neil, thank you so much. That was Neil King there from our environmental desk. Thank you. Even though CO2 emissions have slowed worldwide due to coronavirus restrictions, environmentalists fear a spike in waste from protective equipment, which often ends up in the world's oceans and seas. 
The air is clean in Paris, with most airline flights grounded and many people stuck at home. But the sea is another story. Here off the Mediterranean coast of France, masks and gloves are plentiful. This is the first sign of an advanced type of pollution, if nothing is done. On our beautiful coast, we know that as soon as it starts to rain, all the rubbish coming from the gutters will end up in the sea, and we could see more in the weeks to come. Plastic Personal Protective Equipment, or PPE, has helped millions of people to deal with the pandemic. It's allowed businesses to reopen and travel to resume. And many people are reluctant to give it up, like here in Italy. I see everybody being very careful. All of us travel with our kit. I'm in favor of face masks. I wear a double mask. Health authorities around the world warn against reusing plastic PPE. The risk of infection is too high. Meanwhile, researchers are experimenting with disinfecting masks with UV light. Widespread mask use is expected to continue for years to come. Billions and billions more of these are likely to end up in the ocean, unless people figure out a better way to stay safe.